Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Brentwood Community United Methodist Church. Uh, the gong is really just to let everybody know we're starting and, and remind us to pull out our phones and put them on silence. And I'll tell you, I did that about five minutes ago, and I couldn't do that because it's got a dead battery. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about getting messages during the service. Um, I've got to go home and charge it before I can hear multiple messages from my out-of-state son. But if everybody will uh, remember to silence your phones and then we're entering into a time of worship. Our opening hymn is, what are we doing first here? This is my father's world, number 144. Please stand if you're able. Opportunities and the announcements that are going on this week. 
the work of the church continues, of course, and uh, we have lots of things happening. On June the 20th in the Fellowship Hall, Friends and Faith at 11 a.m., the announcements are all in your bulletin. SPRC on Wednesday the 21st, Finance Committee Tuesday the 20th, and CCN on <coughs> June 28th. So if you're a member of those committees, check with your leads and uh, try to uh, make those. Special music, yes, uh, Robert. I have an announcement. Okay. Uh, we are starting a, a new committee in the church. Boy, it's not. <laughs> uh, a communications committee, and that we're going to be uh, taking care of anything that has to do with communications in the church, uh, the website, the D's and O's, uh, a community liaison, so that we can get more involved in community events. I actually just had a big banner made that we can use at community events, and I'll, I'll show it soon. But I'm looking for people that are um, good with IT, you know, information technology, and good with uh, dealing with people. And if Tony's involved in this, He's, he is a, a half of our community liaison. We, we still want somebody else um, to get involved in that. We have the website, we have social media. If you like doing social media and want to monitor ours, our Facebook page or whatever else page we have. So I'm not on Facebook, so I definitely need somebody um, to handle that part of it. So if anybody's, if anybody's good with technology, Get with me, and this committee's gonna happen. I know Dennis is gonna be involved because this, this is also involved, uh, the, the, uh, the job that Dennis does over here. Um, we're gonna get some people trained on doing this, give Dennis some relief. I know Dave was taken and learning a bit about it, and he can step in if need be, but we need more people to do that. And uh, Hopefully this committee will uh, centralize all our communications and we're getting the same word out everywhere to everybody. And just get with me in fellowship and we're probably going to start meetings by the end of the month. Actual committee meetings. Thank you. <laughs> so the slide that's up there is about filling in for the choir during the summer. If you have a talent and would like to share it with an instrument or your voice, uh, contact uh, Olivia uh, or Jan Schultz, and uh, we'd love to have you perform here on a Sunday. Uh, we always need Sunday school helpers, especially during the summer months. Um, Chris Van Ruten is the chair of the um, Youth Christian Ed Committee, and uh, we'd like to have you help out with the care of the young people's uh, Christian education. So let us know. Upper room is uh, available now. You can get it through the office. Uh, contact Michelle. We have some out in the Narthex. And it's a very useful daily devotional. And I think um, most people will really enjoy this. So this uh, announcement is kind of dear to my heart. Um, the uh, lay leaders and pastor uh, contacted the Voyagers to help sponsor a potluck and fellowship. And uh, the announcements went out saying it was going to be a hymn fest. Well, it is. Pastor said she'd like to play some favorite hymns, but we've invited the string band to lead us in some uh, songs that we can sing along, and they're not all going to be hymns. We have a few favorite oldies, I'll Fly Away, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, This Is My Father's World, and The Sweet By and By. Take Me Home Country Roads, John Denver, You Are My Sunshine, Rocky Top, Sloop John B. So there's going to be more than hymns, and we're going to be trying to entertain you as a string band, and we hope you'll come and enjoy it. It's for everybody in the church. It's not limited to only Voyagers. We just ask the Voyagers to help us sponsor it because uh, they've done this in the past. So that's uh, next week. No, it's two weeks, uh, the 25th. It is one week from today. All right, so we need you to sign up in, in the uh, fellowship hall. There's a clipboard. And we just heard from Bob. Is, are there any other announcements anybody would like to make? Sunday school is still going, and uh, we're still meeting, but this time it's done. Sunday still, school is still meeting. We start at 9 o'clock. It's a great uh, 
uh, lesson this morning. Bega was in there and a few others. So come enjoy fellowship with us for Sunday school at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we'll give you a book when you arrive and you can peruse through it and you don't have to be pre-read or anything. Just come and fellowship with us and learn more about the Lord. Thank you. So we have a special treat for Young Disciples time this morning. Heidi, would you like to introduce them? Yes, our, um, I'd like to invite all the youth and children forward. My daughter, my baby, Jenna Stark, will lead children's moment for us. All right, so all the kids can come up. <laughs> All of the children. Hi guys, so what is today? Does anyone know what today is? Father's Day. Day. What are some things that you like to do with your dads or the men in your life that are special? Anyone know anything? What do you like to do with your dad or grandpa or uncle? Um, I, I usually get the breakfast in bed. Oh, breakfast in bed. That's special. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they like to do? What do you like to do, buddy? I like to play games with my dad. Play games. That's fun. I like to watch movies with my dad or go shopping with him. I don't think he likes that as much, but that's something I like to do and have him come along. Well, we are lucky because God made everyone's family different, just like he made every person different, which is special, because if we were all the same, that would be very boring. So every family looks different. Some families have a mommy and a daddy. Some families have two mommies or two daddies. Some friends, boys and girls, are raised by their grandparents or their aunts or their uncles or other special people. Yes. How can someone have two moms or two dads? It's just the way that God made some families. Every family's different. Wait, so, so in a very rare condition, men could be pregnant? No, no, not scientifically. But um, God blesses families in different ways. So some families look different than each other, and that is special, and we love that, that God gave us different families. So, um, let's go ahead and bow our heads and say a quick prayer, and then we have a little gift that you can give the special men in your life. Uh, Gracious and loving God, thank you for all the different father figures in our lives, the dads, grandpas, uncles, friends, um, people at church that help and support and guide us. We are so thankful for their mentorship. And most importantly, Lord, we are thankful for you as a loving um, and special father in our lives. We pray that we can make the men in our life feel special today and every day and be encouraged by their faithfulness and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we have flowers for you guys. Jenna, why don't we all stand and we're going to hold hands and say the Lord's Prayer. Perfect. And then we'll take flowers and you can give them to the special guy in your life. All right, let's all hold hands. Ready? We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we have flowers for you guys to give to the special men in your life. And you can give it to them, and you can say, Happy Father's Day. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Matches your guys' red outfits today. I like it. And then you can give the flowers, and then you can go to Sunday school. There you go.
Our special music today is presented by Larry Schaefer, supported by Greg, and we appreciate him filling in as our special musician today. Now come to that time in our service where we dedicate our offerings and pledges to the work of this church. If you'll join me in prayer. <clears throat> Loving God, we thank you for the many blessings in our lives, our health for those of us who have it, the healing for those who need it, and the wonderful climate we live in, the weather we have, all the wonderful things in our lives. We bring our tithes and offerings to this church today to support your work in this community to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. Bless these gifts to our, your service and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This reading is from the Old Testament, Proverbs, chapter 4, 1 through 4, and chapter, or verse 22, verse 6. Listen, children, to a father's instruction, and be attentive, that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts, do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender and my mother's favorite, he taught me and he said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. Train the children in the right way and when old, they will not stray. We're here now for our time of joys and concerns. Uh, if there's anybody in, I don't know, Dennis, is there anyone on Zoom? Or if there is anyone here who would like to offer up a joy or a concern? I see uh, Linda. Linda. Oh, sorry. Yes. Good morning. Just wanted to let you know that the red, pink, and white flowers on the altar are from Katie and for their 66th wedding anniversary today. And there's John and Katie up on the screen. Yes. Yes. Happy anniversary, John and Katie. And also, John. It is so wonderful to know that you were doing well following your surgery. I'm so happy that you, you're home and recovering. And I'm going to ask everyone as we bring up a joy and concern to stay with me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So, all right. I, I'm glad to be back visiting with you again. And um, the big patch on my face is because they took a quarter-sized um, cancer off my face. So in six months or so, I'll be beautiful again. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, I'm really glad to see everybody. <laughs> We're that, so happy, Martin, to have you and Beverly here today. And you're beautiful all the time. So, <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our Thank prayer. Bob had his hand up back there. Sharon. I have a joy I'd like to share. It's the perfect month to say, I am the proud parent of a transgender son. He has taught me that a person's gender or sexual identity have nothing to do with their ethics, their morals, or their character as a person. He is a joy in my life. Happy Pride. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like continued prayers for my daughter, Marcia, whose heart has deteriorated, and they are planning on putting her on uh, uh, the transplant list eventually. And then again, I asked last Sunday for prayers for a niece who had brain surgery. They had to redo the surgery this week, but she's now doing good. Wow. Amazing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, we are, we're blessed with having my, my parents here. My mom's here with me today, us today. Um, my dad stayed home, but they're here. They're visiting. And uh, I'd also like to ask for prayers for uh, a friend of ours' daughter, Bella, is having a hard time with some things, and she needs prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I see John Moore's hand up. How do I? Oh, John, can you unmute? I think they're trying. Yeah. Ah, oh, there you are. And their prayers. John, can you say that again? We didn't hear it. I want to thank everybody for their prayers and for all the help that the church has given us. 
Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I have a joy. Uh, come this Thursday, June 22nd, that will be 32 years of married Grace and myself. Uh, congratulations. We are way behind John and Katie. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Uh, Larry. I'm pleased to have one of my daughters here, Bridget. My other daughter and family are out camping, but uh, glad to have Bridget here, a, a college professor, uh, leading and teaching to young people in our community. Wonderful. Welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there any others? And I would like to, I will lead you in prayer. I'd also like to ask, as, as uh, Dave mentioned earlier, prayers for our conference and the United Methodist Church as they work through so many things, and just prayers for an end to divisions and revitalization and energy for the future of the United Methodist Church. But if you would um, pray with me, please. Dear God, our Father in heaven, Thank you for hearing our prayers, those spoken aloud today and those in our hearts and on our minds. Today we honor fathers and families of all forms. We honor all the people in our lives that help us grow, who love and care for us. May your hand of provision be over all, offering hope, health, healing, peace, and security we pray for our world and our world leaders and ask that you bring forth good and godly people to bring about change for the better. Help us to work together to bring an end to wars, violence, divisions, conflicts, misinformation, political unrest, and civil and social injustice. Help us all to sow seeds of calmness, kindness, healing, peace, and love. Help us to be better stewards of your world and help us all to do our part to save the environment and to bring about peace. Be with those who are at work in mission and ministry and help us all to be your hands and feet in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. See, we now have our hymn of peace, Amazing Grace. This was one of my father's favorites.
The New Testament reading today is an epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Happy Father's Day. Coincidental how my opening comment mirrors the call to worship. As happy as Father's Day is, however, this day isn't celebrated by some for various reasons. Not everyone had or has a good relationship with their dad. Some never knew their dad. Others wanted to be a dad, but this was not possible. Bless those heavy hearts. My dad grew up in a large rural Pennsylvania Dutch family. His highest education, eighth grade. Money dad earned working on farms had to be turned over to his father. When 14, dad ran away from home. He did work and provide for our family of nine. Being a simple man, he taught through action and few words. He was a strict disciplinarian. It wasn't until I was taking a college psych class did I realize that when spanking or hitting us, he was saying, you aren't going to grow up and be like me. You're going to be someone. Dad was emotionally unavailable. Growing up, a conversation with dad meant you were in trouble. <laughs> Yet, my dad played Santa Claus all over at Christmas time, including the Moose Lodge. He would pick kids up put them on his lap. He'd be so sweet and kind to them. I would look on and wonder what was wrong with me. But that was my dad. In his own way, dad was a wise man. He taught me at an early age, you're never going to get my goat because I'm not going to let you see where I tied it. <laughs> Alas, apparently, I must have gotten this goat more than once, hence the strict discipline. At weddings, he would toast the three rings of marriage, engagement wing, wedding wing, and suffering. Hence, yes, hence my sense of humor. <laughs> On weekends, dad earned money as cowboy Schaefer and his barnyard ramblers. Weekends, I sing in church. He was always helping neighbors by chopping wood, shoveling snow, mowing lawns, weeding, turning gardens, or providing rides. To this day, I try to lend a helpful hand to others and volunteer my time in many places on many committees. Dad so badly wanted to serve his country during World War II. But as a railroader firing steam engines, he was one of many exempt to keep the wartime traffic moving. I know how proud he was having three sons serve in the United States Army. When seeing me off at the airport to go to Vietnam, Dad told me to come back with more lead on my chest than in it. But no hug, 
No, I love you. Never saw dad hug my mother or tell her I love you, let alone my brothers and sisters. Yearning and acknowledgement of acceptance taught me the importance of providing a loving, caring, and comforting family environment. Through dad's examples, both those negative but many positive, I think I became something, Dad. Thank you. I love you, Dad. I knew when I took on the role of lay leader that I might be asked to fill the pulpit on occasion. This did cause me pause because it's not exactly my comfort zone, but I did feel called to the lay leader role, and I knew that if God was calling me to that, he would bring me through all aspects. And so here I am today. I had a few ideas for messages that I could share, but since it's Father's Day, I thought I would take that route and share with you the importance of fathers in our lives. I read up on some history on the origins of Father's Day, and Father's Day is a holiday honoring one's father or relevant father figure, as well as fatherhood, paternal bonds, and the influences of fathers in society. A woman named Sonora Smart Dodd from Spokane, Washington, is credited as the father of Father's Day in the US. She admired her father, William Jackson Smart, a Civil War veteran and a widower who raised Sonora and her five brothers as single parent. Sonora wished to honor her father and other fathers. She campaigned successfully and the first Father's Day was celebrated in Washington State on June 19, 1910. The holiday spread slowly. It wasn't until 1966 that President Johnson signed a presidential proclamation declaring the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. And it wasn't until 1972 when President Nixon established the permanent national observance of Father's Day. During the 20s and the 30s, there was a movement to do away with both Mother's Day and Father's Day in favor of a single holiday, Parents' Day. The idea being that both parents should be loved, honored, and respected. Commercialism kept both holidays separate. <laughs> but I think that was a rather progressive idea for those times. And I can certainly see the sense in the idea of a Parents' Day as we know that families are not boilerplate. There are so many ways to make and be a family, and they should all be honored. The Bible says that fatherhood is a role that affects identity, spiritual inheritance, and moral training of children. The Bible also states that fatherhood should be characterized by integrity, honor, nurture, admonition, and compassion. The Bible instructs fathers not to provoke or to be cruel, but to raise their children with love and kindness. Jesus didn't turn children away. He welcomed them, paid attention to them, took time to know him, them. The father figures in our lives are the people we wish to model ourselves after. They are the people we look up to, seek guidance from, lean on, trust, and love. I would like to share a little about the fathers that have made a difference in my life. The first man I looked up to was my daddy, Larry A. Harward. He was born on April 8, 1936, the fourth of seven children. My dad grew up working hard in a big family that often had lean times. His mother was sweet and loving, but very busy. And his father was not one to show great affection to his children. 
My grandfather's parents had actually died in a house fire when he was a young boy, and I suspect that shaped him in his interactions with his own family. When my dad was a teenager, he was basically on his own and found himself living and working in Worland, Wyoming. I believe God was always guiding my dad and helping him find his way. He put people in his path. He put people in dad's life that showed him love and compassion and gave him purpose and drive. In 1955, my 19-year-old daddy met my 15-year-old, 16-year-old mommy at a Youth for Christ meeting, and it was love at first sight. They married three years later. My dad was hesitant to become a father because he hadn't had the best example of a father growing up and he was worried that he wouldn't do a good job. Fortunately for me and my brother, he gave fatherhood a chance. I was born on January 18, 1963, and my brother Barry followed five years later. I always admired that my dad rose above the circumstances of his youth, learned from his past, and gave so much love to his family. He was a loving and protective father. I always felt that he was my champion and that his love and support was a given. Dad taught me how to play games when I was young and how to be a good sport. He often said, cheaters never win and winners never cheat. He was definitely not gonna let me win just because I was little. The, the lesson was that life isn't always perfect, but how you learn and grow from your challenges and defeats is what matters. He was silly and fun, and he always found ways to make me feel special. For a number of years, Dad's job had him traveling a lot. When he'd come home, he'd scoop me up and he'd whisper in my ear, I missed you the most, but don't tell Mommy and Barry, that will hurt their feelings. <laughs> Of course, Barry was getting the same message, and, <laughs> and Mom knew she had his heart. But we all felt loved and special. As it turned out, my dad loved being a father, and he was really good at it. I married young at 22, and my dad walked me down the aisle and sent me forward with his love and support. For a man who wasn't sure about being a grandfather, a father, he could hardly wait to be a grandpa. By the time I was 30, I had given him three grandchildren, my son Drew, my daughter Kate, and my daughter Jenna, who is here with us today. I found out I was pregnant with my first child, Drew, right around the time my parents found out they were being transferred to Southern California. I was devastated. I had imagined my children visiting their grandparents in my childhood home and I worried that the distance would hinder their relationship. That's when I learned that home is where the heart is. No distance was going to keep my parents from their children and grandchildren. We traveled back and forth for 10 years. And in 1998, God brought my parents back to Livermore for their retirement. God knew that I would need my parents in the coming years. In 2000, my marriage ended. My kids were 12, 11, and 6, and I had to go back to work. And my parents stepped up during those first rocky months to help us survive and navigate the day-to-day. -day. My parents offered love and support to me and the kids. Their home has always been our safe place to land. In October 2016, Daddy was diagnosed with cancer, and he passed away on December 14, 2016. He lived a rich and happy life. He was loving, and he was loved in return. He was a wonderful dad, grandpa, and great-grandpa. He was a man of integrity. He touched many lives and his humor and, with his humor and kindness. He loved nothing more than to be surrounded by his family. His death left a hole in our family, but we also cherish the memories that keep him present with us today. This verse was part of my dad's funeral service, and it was written by my mom, Margie Harward. 
His children were the riches he did reap. Poor is to die and have no one to weep. Years ago, his love and values he did so, planted deep, nurtured well, they still grow. If you're wondering about my sermon title, Pennies from Heaven, here's where that came from. My dad was a jogger for many, many years until his hips decided to put an end to that sport. He used to ask me if I wanted to run with him because that was where he felt he did his best thinking. I assured him that I did not want to run and that the only thinking I would be doing while running was when can this be over. Uh, it was not my thing and my dad respected that. But dad would often find money, coins, when he was out on a run and he would come home from a run and exclaim, it was a big quarter run today. But most of the time, it was a penny run. So one of the, the days immediately following my dad's passing were difficult, and they were filled with preparations for his service. One of the tasks was to visit the cemetery and pick out a plot. Not a fun task on any day, but this was a particularly miserable day. It was cold and rainy, and our grief was so raw. My mom and I were meeting my brother at the cemetery, and as we got out of the car, we looked down and found a penny. My mom said, Dad's sending pennies from heaven. I picked up the penny. I thanked God and my dad for sending me special reminders. Now, since that day, there have been many, many times when I have felt compelled to look down, and I have found some change, mostly pennies. That is the money, uh, the portion of it. Sometimes the dates on a coin will remind me of a special memory, and sometimes the find just happens when I'm really missing my dad the most. But I love finding these little treasures. They remind me of my dad, and I thank God for giving me such a wonderful dad. A couple of years ago, um, my daughter Jenna gave me this bracelet. It is a penny from heaven. She gave it to me for Mother's Day. And it was a sweet gift from my sweet daughter to honor a man that we both loved so much. As I mentioned earlier, there are many ways to make a family. And I think many of us can appreciate that a family is more than sharing DNA. Again, family is who we wish to model ourselves after. They are the people we look up to, seek guidance from, lean on, trust, and love. From the Bible, I think Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, is an amazing example of how to be a father and create a family. He was engaged to Mary, and she came to him and revealed that she was pregnant, and the baby was not Joseph's, and more than that, it was conceived of the Holy Spirit. This news must have rocked Joseph, must have thrown him for a loop, and the customs and culture of the, of the time would have allowed him to walk away. But Joseph didn't want to humiliate Mary. He chose to stay. The Bible shares that an angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him that Mary was telling the truth and not to be afraid to take her as his wife. In any case, angel or no angel, Joseph chose Mary, and he chose Jesus. God could have picked anyone to be Jesus' father figure, but he chose Joseph, a humble carpenter, to raise Jesus and set a foundation for his life on earth. Joseph modeled love, integrity, and mercy, and so much more for Jesus and for us. So, when Louis came into my life, he was first my friend. He offered me a job when I really needed one and when others questioned my abilities. He gave me a chance and an opportunity. He knew my children were my focus and priority. Over time, our friendship began to change to something more, but it wasn't just me. Three children are a lot of baggage. I was cautious about introducing Louis to my kids as my boyfriend, um, 
because they were living through an adjusting to do divorce. I finally decided to take the plunge and I invited him to, to dinner with the family. I'm a big believer in family dinners, gathering around the table for a meal and conversation. And I grew up with that, I raised my kids with that, and I still love to host regular family dinners. I don't remember the meal that I served, but I do remember lots of noise. My kids are all big talkers. Uh, lots of interest, lots of opinions, uh, lots of silliness, and lots of noise. I remember thinking, Louis is going to run for the hills. This is just too much. But when we said goodbye that evening, he thanked me and said he loved it. I questioned what it was that he loved, and he said, all of it, the chaos, the, the conversation, the noise, the laughs. Louis chose us. We became a family. Eventually, it became obvious that Louie and I weren't going to add a biological child of our own to the family, which made me a little sad, and I worried that he might feel unfulfilled. Um, but he said, we have three children. What more could we ask for? Louis took time to get to know the kids and their interests. He offered them options and opportunities they might never have had otherwise. As a family, we have traveled the world and have had amazing experiences. More than the material things Louis offered, he gave himself. He stepped in when he didn't have to and filled in where their biological dad couldn't or wouldn't. Drew, Kate, and Jenna are Louis's kids. When Kate married 10 years ago, she had both her dads walk her down the aisle because she felt she was who she was because of both of them. When Drew married five years ago, he toasted Louie and acknowledged that with each passing year, he appreciates more and more what Louie gave our family by stepping up and stepping in when he didn't have to. In September, my Jenna will walk down the aisle on Louie's arm and as her daddy, he will send her forward into a new chapter in her life with Jake. Louis chose us, and we chose him, and we are all the better for it. Our family has grown over the years to include my son Drew and his wife Britt, my daughter Kate, her husband Mike, and their children, and my Jenna and Jake. And these three little beauties, my grandbabies, Macy, McKinley, and Mikey. When Kate was pregnant with Macy, that was really Louie's first close experience with pregnancy and a newborn. Kate had a rough pregnancy and Louie was very anxious through it all. When Macy was born, he was delighted but terrified to hold her. She was just too tiny and fragile. She was about six weeks old when somebody just literally kind of deposited her in his arms, and then that was it. He was hooked. <laughs> he is now a devoted pappy. He coaches soccer, attends dance recitals, plays beauty salon, and uh, knows much of the dialogue and music from Frozen and other Disney movies. He is engaged and loving and supportive of his kids and his grandkids. God knew what he was doing when he put Louie in my path, and I am thankful for it. Now I realize that I have been fortunate in my life. I have had my dad, and I have found a man who loves my children as his own. I get it. Not everyone gets a Larry or a Louie in their life. But here is what I do know to be true. We all have God, our Heavenly Father. When you think you have no father figure, think again. You always have God. Yes, we are all shaped by the people in our lives, but what defines you? Your identity is found in God. 1 John 3, 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 
He created you uniquely and you are his child. God knows everything about you and he loves you in spite of it. The unconditional love of a parent. God wants what's best for you and wants to protect you. That doesn't mean that everything will be easy, but it does mean that you will never walk alone. Romans 8, 31, Romans 8, 31 through 32. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Remember who you belong to. God is here to guide you and love you. Just look up. Lean in, trust, and love. Amen. Please, uh, our closing hymn is a special hymn that we're singing to honor the men in our life. We love you, men of God. like to offer this benediction. Listen to what the Lord says. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and still I maintain my unfailing love toward you. I will lead you beside quiet streams and down smooth, uncluttered paths so that you do not stumble. For I have become a father to you, and you are my firstborn child. Go from here in confidence knowing that the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with you. Amen. Amen.